Hi there, I'm Amy from Cakes With Faces and today I've got some tips for you for the Sapporo Snow Festival. What there is and just how to have the best time at the festival. And then after that I've got some practical tips like where to stay and how to get there if you're planning a trip for next time. There's new videos about Japan on my channel every Thursday. There's travel vlogs with lots of ideas for things to do. And there's my Japan planning series with tips to help you plan your trip to Japan. And if you need hoodies or sweatshirts to keep you warm, either at the snow festival or just at home, have a look at cakeswithfaces.co.uk. Everything is my design. And I also designed these warm knitted winter scarves, which kept me warm throughout the snow festival. There's my hedgehog scarf and my new space scarf. Now let's get started. Firstly, what is there at the snow festival? There's three sites to the snow festival. The main one is in Adori Park, which is a really long, thin park in the center of Sapporo. And that's where you find the really big snow sculptures. The second one is Suskino, which is just a short walk away, also in the center of Sapporo. And that's where the smaller ice sculptures are. They look like they're made of glass. And the third one is Tsudome, which has snow slides and activities. Some of them are just for kids, but there's lots for adults as well. The snow slides are actually pretty big. I didn't actually go to that one myself. It's more towards the edge of town and you need to take a train or a bus to get there. And the great thing about the festival is it's all free. You don't even need a ticket, it's all open. So you just turn up and walk in. There's a couple of the activities at Sudome that you need to pay for, but apart from that, everything's free. It's really good. Here's a tip for getting between the two main sites. Pole Town is a long underground shopping street that runs between Odori Park and Suskino, so it's perfect for getting between the two sites and it gives you a break from the cold, which you're gonna need. I found that after being outside in the cold for a while, my feet would start going numb, so I needed to go inside for a bit just to warm up. There's also Tanuki Koji, which is a covered shopping street that runs east-west, and that's really good for a break from the cold as well. Next, daytime and nighttime. You can visit the festival in the daytime or the nighttime, but don't miss the nighttime. That's the best fit. They light the sculptures up. The ice sculptures look really beautiful. And with the big snow sculptures, they have shows every 15 minutes or so with lights, music, and projection mapping that really bring them to life. It really is spectacular. The illuminations start at about 4 or 5 p.m. when it starts to get dark and they carry on until about 10 or 11 at night. Next, how busy is it? Now Sapporo is the main famous snow festival in Japan. It's a major event, so it is busy. I went on the last weekend, which is supposed to be the busiest time. I actually didn't find it that bad on a weekday, but then I went back on a Saturday night and it was a lot busier. There was a time when we were crossing the road and we were just caught up in a big crowd of people all going along together. So go on a weekday if you can. They operate a kind of one-way system to keep everyone moving. Adori Park is long and thin, so you go one way along one side and then back down the other and stop off at anything you want to see. And it kind of works, it keeps everything organised. And in the evening, the crowds do start to thin out if you stay towards the end as people start to go home. Next, a bit about other snow festivals. Now, before I started planning my trip to Hokkaido, I never realized there was more than one snow festival in Japan. I thought it was the Sapporo Snow Festival and that was it. But there's actually lots of other smaller festivals too. And from what I can see, they tend to be a bit less commercial. At the Sapporo Festival, everything is sponsored by companies, which I guess is how they can afford it and how they can make the sculpture so big and even put the event on at all. But at the smaller festivals, it's more about the art and the community getting together and creating a winter wonderland and just having a good time. So if you have time or if you're going in winter, but not at the start of February, see what other snow festivals are on around Hokkaido or North Tohoku where it's snowy. Here's a couple of them. There's the Sunkyo Ice Waterfall Festival, which looks really magical lit up at night. The Uchijuku Snow Festival, which is really picturesque with all the old buildings covered in snow. And the Zhao Snow Monster Festival, where the snow turns trees at a ski resort into snow monsters. And there's loads of others too. Like the Otaru Snow Light Path Festival. 
If you've already seen my Hokkaido videos, you'll know I went to the festival at Otaru. The two festivals overlap, so if you time it right, you can go to both. Otaru is a town on the coast. It's only half an hour from Sapporo by train, so it's not far at all. It's a really picturesque old town. The festival's centered around the canal where they make lanterns out of snow and ice and float lights on the water. It's really beautiful. There's some really creative displays and although it's not as big and impressive as the Sapporo Snow Festival, you can tell a lot of love's gone into it and it's really enchanting and just magical. It was actually the highlight of my time in Hokkaido. Now back to the Sapporo Snow Festival and Snow Miku. Snow Miku is a special version of Hatsune Miku from Vocaloid. She embodies the spirit of the snow festival. Every year they have a new design for Snow Miku with a new outfit and style. And she has a pet rabbit called Yukine. Yuki means snow. They always have a Snow Miku sculpture at the festival and the show at night was one of my favourites. It was like a mini concert and last year she did a duet with the singer from Bang Dream. There's a shop with special merch and there's also a shop at New Chitose Airport if you're flying into Sapporo. There was also a Snow Miku AR stage with a special show you could watch on your phone with Snow Miku flying around. Now, I don't know if they're going to have that again this year, but Snow Miku will definitely be there, so keep an eye out. There's also a streetcar decorated with Snow Miku graphics. I didn't actually come across it as I was going around, but if you're a Vocaloid fan, that's definitely something to look out for. Food stalls. There's food stalls all the way along in Adori Park. They're a bit more commercial than smaller food stalls I've seen at festivals elsewhere, but there are a lot of them and there's a pretty big choice. I had this Oshiruko, which is sweet red bean soup with mochi. It's a traditional winter food. And we also had these extra long french fries. They got cold really quickly in the snow. Most of the stores are more like proper Japanese food. Next, demolishing the festival. If you're there the day after the festival finishes, you can watch them demolishing the snow sculptures, which would be something unique to see. The sculptures are just so big and take so long to make, and then you can watch them being destroyed. What's the weather like? It is very cold and snowy. I'd never been anywhere that cold, and before we went, I was actually a bit scared about what it would be like and how I was gonna cope with it, because I do feel the cold. I think you can see how cold we were. At night, it went down to about minus 12 degrees C one night, and in the daytime, it didn't really get any warmer than about minus two degrees C, although that did feel warm in comparison. But it was totally worth it, and I think it adds to the experience. If I can cope with it, you definitely can. I'll tell you a bit more in next week's video, which is gonna be about how cold it is in winter in Japan. It's gonna be about Tokyo and Hokkaido with some tips for how to deal with the cold and what to wear. Also, bear in mind that your phone and camera batteries won't last as long as normal in the cold and you're gonna to wanna to take a lot of pictures. Next, booking your trip. Now, obviously it's too late for this year, but if seeing all this makes you want to go next time, I booked my trip in August. It was actually during a heat wave in the UK and at the time going somewhere really cold just seemed really appealing. You need to book your hotel as early as possible because everywhere will be booked up. I booked mine in August and then I checked again nearer the time and the only places left were like thousands of pounds for just a couple of nights stay. As it is, the hotel we booked was the cheapest one in the area and it was still double or three times its normal price. Obviously, hotels ramp up their prices because they know lots of people want to come for the festival. So if you wanna go, that's just how it is. You have to accept your hotel's gonna be a bit pricier than normal. Where to stay? So the festival's mainly around the Adori Park area in central Sapporo. I stayed near Nakajima Park, which seemed like a good place to stay. There wasn't a whole lot in the area, but there was this shrine which looked stunning in the snow. And it was close to a station. To get around Sapporo, you can use the subway trains. There's only about three lines, so it's a lot more simple than the Tokyo Metro. As long as you're near a station, you'll be able to get to the festival really easily. So you don't need to stay near Adori Park. In fact, that would probably be even more expensive. If you can, pick a hotel that's as close to a station as possible. 
Even a short walk seems twice as long when it's so cold, especially when you're dragging your suitcases in the snow. My local station was Horohirabashi and it took hardly any time to get into the centre. The subway's really easy to use, all the signs are in English, the trains aren't quite as frequent as they are in Tokyo but it's nowhere near as busy so it's a lot more chilled. If you have a Suica or Pasmo card or one of the other IC cards for paying for your trains, you can use that in Sapro as well. It's really easy so you don't have to worry about what sort of ticket to get. Although I was tempted to get the local IC card for Hokkaido because it has a really cute flying squirrel on it. Instead of Suica, this one's called Kitaka. Kita means north. Finally, how to get to Sapporo. You can get there on the train or an internal flight. I took the bullet train from Tokyo. The whole trip is eight hours long, but we broke it up and stayed overnight along the way, which was really good because we got to see some new places. I really enjoyed the places we stopped at, which was Hakodate on the way there and Matsushima on the way back. There's videos about both on my channel. Going on such a long journey does take up quite a lot of time on your trip, but I like the bullet train so I enjoyed the experience. Just watching the landscape change and get all snowy and you get to go on the fastest bullet train there is, the Hayabusa, which means Peregrine Falcon. It's faster than the Nozomi which goes to Kyoto. The whole trip's covered by your Japan Rail Pass. You do have to make seat reservations for the Hayabusa before you go. You can do it online when you're at home. There's more about that in another video on my channel. An internal flight is probably a quicker option, even when you take into account getting to the airport and waiting around at check-in. And it might be cheaper as well, especially if you're not getting a Japan Rail Pass. You could actually book it with your international flight. So as soon as you arrive in Japan, you change planes in Tokyo and fly straight to Sapporo. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. I really enjoyed the Sapporo Snow Festival. It really was amazing. And even just being somewhere so snowy was just really an experience. Keep the Japanuary pictures coming. I've really enjoyed looking at them. And I'll see you next week on Thursday. Bye-bye.